from the Vine Sistar of the Light of Sarah Adams. Energy update by Archangel Mikael. Greetings, beloved ones. We are sending you blessings of love and light in this now moment, and we are inviting you to open your heart to our message for you. Beloved one, it is easy to be impressed by the experiences of the illusion. Your ego mind has created it, and it did an excellent job because it knows all your worries and fears so well. It then went on to, and projected them into the matrix of your illusion experience. From there it reached back to you and created unpleasant experiences, thus perpetuating your worries and fears. How can you escape the illusion that your ego mind created? The first principle of the ego illusion is the separation from God. From God within you and the God within all the people in your world, what is God? God is love and divine happiness and joy. If you take the illusion experience, it is the absence of love, divine happiness and joy. In contrast, God's reality is the real reality. The illusion of the ego mind is not real. Your awareness of this truth is the first step in leaving the illusion and stepping into the real reality of God. Whenever an experience is unpleasant, not of love and divine happiness and joy, it means that it is not real, even though it might look and feel that way. The first step of detangling yourself from the illusion is to begin to say in your mind that the unpleasant experience is not real. Then focus on your connection with God by placing your hand on your heart center. Take a deep breath and begin to focus on the experiences of love and peace around you. When you begin to focus on the loving experiences around you, you will move towards God's reality. This dear one is a process and takes consistent application. Know that all is well, beloved ones. Welcome home. We are walking beside you every step of the way, dear ones. You are loved beyond measure, always. I am Archangel Mikael and I bring you this truth. From teloschannel.com From Divine Sistar of the Light, Aurora Ray Unraveling Earth's Ancient Origins, Our Cosmic Connection Let's go on a fascinating journey through time to explore the history of our planet and the incredible link it shares with Pleiadian ancestors. Pleiadian ancestors were like special guides who helped create worlds and civilizations with their love and creativity. Remarkably, they are also part of our family tree, as they pass down their DNA to become our ancient relatives. Acting like cosmic architects, these Pleiadian ancestors spread light and knowledge across the universe, and amazingly, their legacy lives on within us through our DNA. Imagine Earth as a unique meeting place in the vastness of space. It's like a bustling exchange center where different civilizations from galaxies near and far could connect and share their wisdom. Earth's strategic location right on the edge of a galactic system made it easily accessible for beings from distant galaxies to come and visit. The secret pathways known as way portals allowed energies to travel swiftly through our space zone, forming cosmic highways that connect different parts of the universe. In an extraordinary cosmic event, beings from distant galaxies hurriedly gathered on Earth. They wanted to leave their mark and look like us on this special planet. Leading this event were creator gods, skilled experts in genetics, and creating life. They brought forth living beings and designed intricate patterns of existence. They were like master artists and scientists combined. They could weave together tiny molecules, giving them special codes and frequencies to bring new life forms into existence. The Creator Gods designed various species, including humans and animals, using a magical blend of DNA. What made it even more fascinating was that sentient civilizations from different corners of the cosmos willingly contributed their DNA to become part of Earth's incredible biodiversity. 
Thanks to the expertise of these master geneticists, Earth became a melting pot of life and diversity. As we travel further back in time, we discover the intriguing stories of ancient civilizations that once thrived on our planet. These highly advanced societies shared a strong connection with the Pleiadians and their wisdom. They existed more than half a million years ago, leaving behind mysteries buried in the sands of time. These ancient humans, much like us, were connected to the Pleiadian ancestors. Their DNA was intact, and they thrived on our planet, developing highly evolved ways of life Imagine their magnificent cities and thriving communities, all existing in harmony with the natural world. One of these remarkable civilizations is said to have existed in a far southern continent known as Antarctica. Buried beneath the icy surface, ancient ruins and remnants of a once thriving civilization are believed to lie hidden. These remnants hold the key to understanding the sophisticated culture that once graced this ancient land. Another enigmatic civilization is thought to be concealed beneath the layers of sand in the vast Gobi Desert of Mongolia. In the arid landscape, archaeologists and explorers have uncovered remnants of an advanced society that possess knowledge and technologies beyond their time. These ancient civilizations were not merely primitive tribes, but societies of great intellect and spiritual awareness. They had a profound connection with the stars, understanding the cosmic forces that shaped their existence. Their wisdom was immense, and their teachings were passed down through generations, carrying the knowledge of the Pleiadian connection. These ancient ancestors held sacred balance between the physical and spiritual realms, recognizing the interconnectedness of all life. However, as time passed, their advanced civilizations faced challenges and changes that altered their destinies. We may never fully understand the reasons behind their decline, but the echoes of their existence still resonate in the depths of history. Yet the legacy of Pleiadian influence persisted. As civilizations rose and fell, their DNA remained intertwined with Earth's ever-evolving tapestry of life. It's as if a cosmic thread connects us to our ancestors and their ancient ways. As we continue our cosmic exploration, we come to realize that the story of Earth is an interconnected tale interwoven with the light and love of Pleiadian ancestors. Their gifts of knowledge and creativity have shaped our world, leaving us with a profound sense of wonder about the vastness of the universe and our place within it. We love you dearly. We are here with you. We are your family of light. We are the Galactic Federation. Aho! Aurora Ray, Ambassador of the Galactic Federation, from the thegalacticfederation.com. From Divine Sistar of the Light Eri Ni, Crystal and Indigo Guide to the Galaxy, Athens, the Kumara Masters, Teachers of the Future. Message. This is the time of zero. Witness its glory. Please know that free space has already been created for us to be here again. We return from within the flow of God Goddess. No one else has a saying on this. Nothing else affects us but the will of God Goddess. This is an organic move of restoration. We are one with God Goddess, and it is only Him, Her, that we follow and listen to. The time has come for us to be back and own our place and power again in our true Hestia. The void of the unformed possibilities are here and are being embodied by those ready to let go and embrace and surrender to the magic of the unknown. Can you see it? The tree of life has been dropping its fallen parts and it's rejuvenating. Anahata, Anahata, Anahata. The trinity flame of the divine Kundalini restores the tree. Illness is gone. A new life is now. The divine Kumara couples of the future have spoken in innocence. 
both masculine and feminine, are to retrieve their inner core code of 144,000 frequency and consciously follow their true destiny, which is the colorful land, the colorful water, the colorful air, the colorful light, the living ether of innocence and love. The restoration via the diamond matrices is taking place as we speak, let go of what was and enter the orgasmic creation. Eye contact with the whale, the dragon, and the white dove. They move swiftly. Can you see them? Breathe in and out their codes, born again in your innocence. A new reality is here. Call the cosmic flame in. Royal solar family. Love is all there is. So it is. Erini. Hunama Anata Kumara From Divine Sistar of the Light Galaxy Girl Archangelic Collective Divine DNA Greetings, beloved ones of the light. We are the Archangelic Collective. We surround you in our wings of fire, of light, of love, of comfort and strength and purity. We send this fire light out into your field, transmuting, comforting, lending a hand and a wing for those who are too weak to use their own. You are human angels, those of you hearing this now. You are the angelic with the human as aspects of source and fractals of light. You are this light, the source breath of the in-between and the all-around. You are this light. You are literally the light in the world. You are surrounded in this light as we are surrounding you in all moments. We have been working with all of you tirelessly as you work tirelessly. We know your frustration, your fatigue. This world has been so dark for so long. There is such a massive undertaking of change, revival and renewal on so many dimensional layers and strong points but the light flows easily through all time space, through all dimensions. The technology is being removed that has kept humanity within the trance. More is being tried, but it is being weakened. I see they are infusing light codes into the dark codes, which instantly dissolves the dark into smoke and light. There is so much surrounding you as you are within this energy tumult. There is much you do not see. Codes surround you all the time. The divine DNA is a code. Creation is mathematically precise, stunning to us in its complexity and individuation. You are creators. We see you in your beauty. We know who you are and have been, and are truly amazed by your courage, your bravery, your strength. We surround you. We protect you. We are sources, hands, and feet in the angelic realms of the light and of the dark. We carry the light through all places and spaces, cleansing, clearing, just as you do within the physical, when you are aligned up with your highest purpose. We are the angelic collective. Every flower, every insect, every creature has a code of creation or miscreation. Gaia is stunning in her beauty, Grimming with life from all across the galaxy, a seeded planet of breathtaking beauty and love. She will be renewed to this once again. This is one of the aspects that you are assisting with on the ground side as you ground the codes of light, of love, into the mesosphere. Your DNA is changing moment by moment. Sitting in your sun for moments at a time will assist with this. As the sun currently is brimming with codes to share, codes of awakening, of ascension, of healing, and of rebirth. Being in nature in this time will serve you greatly. You are serving greatly by serving as a grounding mechanism for these codes, creating a layer of light on and within Gaia, offering a landing pad for these codes. Creator is very pleased with you. The ground team has and is doing extraordinarily well despite the numerous obstacles. Do not give up hope. There is always hope. We see outside of time, which as you know is a construct of this reality of yours, and outside of time with a grand perspective it is done. 
the light has been grounded and transmuted all into the next octave of evolutionary embodiment of ascension this is what is manifesting and it seems slow to you we know this grounding more light will help you through this process so that you feel the peace of the ascension codes within your body sit in the sun for increments at a time allow the archangels and masters to work with you much is coming up for clearing and it is a painful time emotions seem unusually heightened you are in a universe of emotions and emotions are part of being human do not be ashamed of your emotions you are to feel them to heal them the pain must bubble up to be transmuted much of this has been occurring this week and it has been exhausting we send you our angelic codes of light of love of healing we send you our strength we send you our comfort we are all around you we are the archangelic collective namaste from era of light dot com from divine sister of the light georgina be amount another total reset has happened full quantum timeline jumping is full on there's no time to stand still it is full on at the moment this is going to throw a lot of people as people are going to witness everything they create mirrored back at them in a major way we do not escape anything the upper higher heart is fully in power i knew august was going to be a massive changing month and boy oh boy it has truly delivered in magnificent ways there's no time to die 007 has just come on as i started to write the eye in this film connects strongly with the owl post i wrote and the start of this film had dna strands swirling around in circles with an egg timer in the middle last week when we are in tintagal merlin caves i was shown there was going to be a shift within the collective I knew why I was guided to the Arthurian ley lines and what I needed to do while we were there. I've since had that confirmed. The grid work I needed to do in this powerful area was fulfilled and very successful. After we left there, I kept being shown signs that imminent change is going to happen. The codes through numbers were all aligning perfectly to show me what I had done and created within this important portal. I've really learned to trust myself, and what has blown me away is when other people write exactly what I have experienced to confirm what I have personally been a part of. Today I have felt off. My energy has been feeling strange, and I couldn't regulate my energy. Matt asked me where I wanted to go today. I knew I needed to go to the tower near where we live, where I know Merlin visits often. En route, Theodore said, Mummy, my tablet has frozen. It needs resetting. I could see I had to reset it. As soon as we arrived, my energy settled and the feeling I had at home had totally gone. While we were there, Matt said, Do you know all airlines have been grounded? I said no, but that made sense, because where the tower is you can see the planes either land or take off. Gatwick Airport. I said to Matt, all planes in the UK have been grounded for a reason, and this is a message I needed to take on board. The first word I got was rest. Apparently there was a complete collapse in air software, so no planes could leave the UK for hours. I said to Matt, this is a reset message. Software reset. But a reset in everything. The words changing of guard came up today, and I am aware there's always been a change of guard this year, but there's been another. I've also been presented with things mirroring back at me, like I am looking back at myself in a mirror. So many things have happened today showing a mirrored experience, like a twin mirror, mirror union. I've experienced a sudden ending and a wonderful touching compliment in the last 24 hours. This is showing me where I need to stay in the middle, neutral, where I believe all the magic is happening. It's so tempting to be sucked back into old ways. I know I don't belong there, nor can I go back there anymore. There's many things to tempt us to be pulling back into lack of overthinking and test if you love and trust yourself. 
We got home from the tower. I picked up my phone and I received a message. You need to reset your phone. New software is available. Boom. You are going to witness more endings and everything possible that isn't aligned. But new opportunities open up for you. As I mentioned above, you could be tested to be sucked back into old ways. How much do you love, trust, and believe in yourself? Trust this process, everyone, however it is shown to you, as it will be perfect. Now I understand the 1010, ending and new beginnings. As I finish writing this post, the film Titanic has just come on. The 9-11 theme is strong. Heart of the Ocean. Expect the miracles to continue to unfold. So much is happening in the middle, and nothing is as it seems. I love you. From EssentialMBS.com From Divine Sistar of the Light, Lauren Carolyn Gorgo Cosmic Key Codes, Unlocking Our Dormant DNA This weekend, 923, is the autumnal equinox in the Northern Hemisphere and the vernal equinox in the Southern Hemisphere, which always brings much-needed harmony to the planet as light and dark meet in perfect balance setting the backdrop for our Libra season learnings. The sacred momentum of the equilibrium is the tipping point that not only marks the entrance into a new planetary season, but depending upon your position relative to the equator, darkness begins to overtake the light and vice versa. The veils are also notoriously thin this time of year. Amplifying our connection to the unseen realms as we honor the cycles of life, death, and rebirth by letting go of outdated structures and expired patterns so that new elements of self can arise. Time to activate the inherent higher potentials within your cell structure to materialize the long dormant attributes of the cosmic human. For those stepping into the unified experience of life on earth, this particular equinox is delivering the cosmic key codes needed to unlock our dormant DNA so that heaven can open from within the body. These new light levels are also evolving our light body matrix via cosmic rays that are streaming forth from the galactic center, increasing our capacity to receive and transmit the diamond light of source. This gateway has been presenting for months as a quantum leap into the cosmic realms on Earth, where we are able to greet our higher star selves from our lower physical levels. This means our ascension into the heavenly realms on Earth is fully underway, as we are lifted to the state of grace and released from the discordant energies of lower Earth. This also means that we, as a collective, are beginning to handle the frequencies of Source in such a way that we are able to completely bypass the realms of suffering and enter into the harmonic realms of Upper or New Earth. Through this Equinox portal, we have the ability to free ourselves from the lower states of human consciousness that derail us from the original divine blueprint and catapult ourselves into the higher states that effectuate lasting change. This ensures that we are aligned with the realms of truth required to realize our dharmic destiny as infinite possibilities open up and become available to us. Next week leading to the third 99 Stargate, 927, of the month, plus the Aries full moon, 929, is also pivotal. 222 flowing in again in that we are rerouting our consciousness to a reality in which we are not only free of suffering, but unattached to the suffering of others as well, liberated from the prevailing programming separation constructs of the third dimensional realm. As we arrive at the final 9-9 stargate, we, love workers, anchors, indigos, blu-ray warriors, a.k.a. God's army are resolved of our mission work to dismantle the 9-11 trauma timelines from within our own DNA and replacing them with the restored divine feminine Christ codes 913 that have been erased from the planetary database. 
Note that the first two 99 gates of the month may have required some final purges and cell memory trauma releases to complete the job. And so now through the last week of the supercharged month of choice points, timeline alterations, and shifting trajectories, many will be finding themselves in a purified position to not only receive new oaths, divine covenants, but to finally enact them as the global frequency up levels to accommodate our emerging diamond light body technology. The recent massive increase in solar energy is delivering these new cosmic key codes through the equinox gateway for exactly this reason. As we absorb this new higher light quotient into our cells, we are arriving at our destination vibration which means the planetary frequency is approaching its zenith point in terms of the requirements needed to flip into this new cosmic state of being. 2023 has been relentless in this regard with continual energetic upgrades needed to push us to this point with frequencies that have not stepped down since the onset of the new year. This demanded so much from us, however, we are now finally at the physical birth point the full maturation of our yearly harvest, which circumvents the need for continual labor pains, as we are lifted to new levels of love, love light, through this planetary gateway. For those who are ready, willing, and able to exit the lower earth reality, the distorted time-space matrix that traps and collects consciousness to be used for nefarious reasons, this equinox opens a three-month delivery portal into the new cosmic reality. And as we navigate this birth canal that closes on the solstice, we are being offered a divine dispensation to release any remaining karmic entanglements with the ease and grace of mastership that we inherently possess to complete all that is left of our 3D lives with the full support of heaven's landing. This is our window of salvation, the receival of blessings from on high, from New Earth Institute that love, from divine growth or of the light open, from open hand, eight steps for maximum catalysis in life situations during the shift. It's becoming increasingly clear Gaia has completed her karmic soul contract with the Matrix and is unwinding her energies out of the old 3D construct. We are likely to find the shift of energies creating turbulence in all aspects of our lives, from our relationships to how we live and work. But we can successfully ride these waves and capitalize from them if we know how to work with them. It's all about equalizing with any negative reactivity, unwinding through, then unleashing new aspects of beingness. Here's how. Gaia gears up to unwind the old paradigm. It may come as a surprise to many, but we manifest the exact external circumstances we need so as to process inner karmic density. The external we experience in life is the direct reflection of our internal configuration of consciousness. The space-time continuum of the quantum field bends around us in relation to what we are being, both conscious and unconscious. The same can be said for Gaia. As surprising as it may sound, Gaia too drew the alien intervention here because of a karma contract. Her instability as a planetary soul required suppression in order to prevent explosive releases. There have, for example, been five explosive mass extinctions on the planet previously. But now she is ready to shift progressively and more steadily into the higher 5D paradigm. Her soul contract with the old construct is complete. You are already witnessing this in profound ways as her toroidal spin increases. It may feel like the day is getting shorter. We'll need to really focus on what's truly necessary in our day, not wasting time, effort, or energy. We will definitely need to declutter. We will also see it in the strong weather patterns and infusing solar and galactic energies as Gaia lowers her magnetic field in the ongoing pole shift. Explore why Gaia's contract with the Matrix is now complete. 
the human impact. We are going to feel these energies coming into our being, which will be experienced by many as strongly turbulent. They can wreak havoc in all aspects of our lives, from relationships to how we live and work. Unless we actively process the energy and integrate it, that way we can capitalize from the infusing energies and bring them positively into our lives. Here then are eight key steps to working with catalysis in the shift. They are designed to confront and process out activating karmic density and to open a space for the energies to express through you. You can try this approach where you feel a particular aspect of your life or a key situation is requiring change and growth. Eight key steps for working with catalysis in the shift. 1. Bring your attention to an obvious dynamic in your life that is inviting change. Go into meditation with it, visualizing all aspects in as much detail as possible, especially and including other people involved. 2. Now explore through your body and through your field how it makes you feel. Pay attention to the impact on your emotions and thought patterns. 3. Particularly watch for areas of tightness and blockage and bring your awareness to these locations within. Watch also for dead zones where your consciousness may have withdrawn or if your consciousness has extracted to a degree from the body. 4. Now explore intuitively what you are attached to that's causing this tightness. What outcome is your identity wanting or else is afraid will happen? What are you attached to or anxious about? 5. When you have explored all possible hooks and attachments, ask yourself the question, is it really worth carrying this baggage around in my life? 6. When you know the answer is a definite no, then visualize and feel yourself setting down the baggage, letting go of the need to control the situation. 7. Now work to disassociate from the situation by dropping deep into the sense of presence within. You are now watching yourself from this observer's vantage point. Be sure that you are not distant, though, instead that you're intimate with it, just not defined by it. You become the God-Self. 8. Now explore what new aspect of beingness wants to arise through you. Maybe it's determination and commitment, or maybe it's greater sensitivity and flow. Maybe greater diplomacy or creativity. Feel this as an energy and work to embody it through animated expression, perhaps dancing to music, for example, or connecting out in nature. The patience and persistence of the spider. I found myself in a period of intensity with much administration to do in my day. It was consuming the sense of expansiveness and freedom that I feel at home with. It was causing a degree of irritation and frustration. Upon leaving my house for a break, I noticed a spider had created a web right near the door lock and was sitting completely still in the center. Two hours later when I returned, it was in exactly the same position, as if it hadn't moved at all. It spoke of patience and persistence, but also waiting for the right things to land in your web, not wasting time or energy on things that are unnecessary. I felt I could embody the energy of the spider and it helped enormously to ease through the rest of the week. New space opened and new energies flowed in. Gearing up for catalysis and change in your life. All the time now we are entering new phases of the shift as Gaia gears up to progressively strip down the 3D construct and ascend into the new 5D paradigm. If we simply bury our heads in the sand about this, at some point it's going to hit us like a ton of bricks. But if instead we honor the changes, accept that change is invited in us, and work to evolve through in a way that I have outlined, then what's going to happen instead is that we will have a magical roller coaster ride of miracles and magic. We will grow through what is unfolding and increasingly embody our God Self, here and now. From OpenHandWeb.org From Divine Brother of the Light, Pars Kute Our planet is continuing to receive higher frequency energy. 
These bursts of incoming energy are increasing in strength. Each burst contains higher frequencies and ascension codes of light. They are clearing the path of obstacles that have prevented a rise in consciousness and the accompanying ascension. This is leading to an unprecedented opportunity for planetary and individual ascension. Each arrival of new energy is inviting us to ascend to higher levels and be of service for the highest good. Preparing ourselves to receive this new energy can facilitate its assimilation into our current energy field. One of the first ways to prepare is to have a desire for receiving the new energy. Then we set our intent to receive and assimilate it in a harmonious way. This prepares our cells and energetic body to know that a change will be taking place. They can be in a receiving mode rather than a resisting one. We may wish to communicate to our body how excited we are about the new energy and how it will benefit us on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. This puts the body in a state of readiness and anticipation. In this state of readiness, we may wish to review our spiritual path, our mission of service, and where we would like to be. Manifestation occurs more rapidly in the new energy. A clear picture of what we want for our path will direct the energy to form the thoughts and images we project into reality. The clearer we are with our desires, the more likely the energy will arrange itself into that pattern. This is also a good time to review how we currently see ourselves and whether we wish to make any adjustments to be current with who we are in the present moment. If there are situations or items that are no longer a good fit for our path, we simply express gratitude for their service and release them with love. Remember that change is ongoing with the incoming energy. It is continuing to invite us to look at what we want and make adjustments as desired. What calls to us may change. We remain focused on the present moment and what we are feeling. Another aspect of receiving the high energy is to remain heart-centered. Some of the higher frequencies can only be accessed in a high vibrational state. This is to safeguard the use of these energies. Being heart-centered is enhanced in many ways. We may wish to spend some quiet time at the beginning of the day and focus on our heart center. We express gratitude for our blessings and ask that we may serve as a channel for the highest use of the new energy. Feel love for all beings. Each being originated from the same source and carries a spark of the divine. This leads to a feeling of oneness with all beings and all of creation. This focus on love and oneness invites the higher frequency energy into our being. To maintain this vibration, we may wish to pause during the day and repeat this process for a few moments. The more we practice this, the more automatic it will become. Being heart-centered will be our default pattern. We will have a clear focus on love when receiving the higher energy. Our heart-centered focus and love will radiate out to those around us and throughout the multi-dimensions. We will be a force for the highest good. Within divine love of one, pars kute. From divine sister of the light, Raylene Brady. As we stir from our galactic catnap, the lower modes of power, control, image, pride that have had us in a dystopian disconnect are unshackling. The ability to interface with our innate superpowers bestowed upon us by the spiritual nature of our most sacred self and divine apparatus are made cognitively manifest. The fields and forms of Gaia Galactica's extra-dimensional body expands and contracts within the galactic cycles. For me, Lionsgate is not an annual calendrical or astrological event occurring outside of one's own self, 
but a soul-directed capacity to discern how well we are able to personally measure record and sustain increasing cosmic and planetary consciousness streams as a type of graduation gateway. The auric field, which is designed to be expansively represented throughout the natural worlds within worlds, until now has been disconnected within the divinity held in nature. Earthing has us gained true access to the keys and codes that are bestowed upon us by the multitude of kingdoms therein, and expand our fields and forms. The gift of this nexus point is as a gnosis gateway to access, anchor, and alchemize your optimal state of being and infuse your frequency band with the attributes of pure empathy. This releases malevolent victim, victimizer, rescuer triggers that perpetuate genetic damage, soul fragmentation, and emotional impairment. AI is non-empathic by design and therefore cannot infiltrate frequencies when one is in a pure state of divine compassion, expressing through the giving and receiving of random acts of kindness and the perfection of redemption. As we hold a loving heart space with ourselves, it only takes that one step further in our sincerity to envision this highest state of being for the whole of humanity and all living beings. Many awakening souls are becoming cognizant of several highly significant truths, piercing their inner knowing, all the while unveiling of nefarious inversions are ramping up as the scripted pantomime of the illusory play winds down. The nature of our true human design is to navigate multiple dimensional realities whilst simultaneously deciphering consciousness streams. Venus is considered the higher self of our Earth. Sirius as the great central sun is the higher self of our galaxy. And Lyra is the matristic mother codon of all source-seated races. In this way we remain enveloped in loving exchange with our stellar brethren by way of genomic synthesis. All the while holding true to our divine human source code, we are Lyran, Syrian, Leonin, starry ourselves and galactic lineages. Ask for this to be fully cognizant now. Lyra is symbolized as the golden harp whose celestial sounds tug at the heart strings, overcoming unchecked emotions. Through this gateway, both hope and the promise of a reign of peace are the gifts on offer via the golden harp frequencies. The organic star mirror for this terrestrially is the land of the gold harp, Eira, which holds great significance in the current unfoldment. The trinitized, star-seated races of Venus, Lyra, and Sirius embody the Christic purity of royal stellar lineage in which both our grace and godhood are upheld. Sirius is considered the heart of the Christos, and the Rosa d'Oro, golden rose, the risen Christ spiritually adorned in pure golden vestments as the sun of all pure light. Ask and you shall receive, rose gold. Rose gold amplifies your expressions as the attitude of gratitude. This appreciation bestows abundant blessings for you and your tribe. Rose gold is highly conducive and does not tarnish. In it but not of it. The analogy is given that even though a nugget of gold can fall into a puddle of mud, when it is washed, it still remains pure, unaffected, the mud cannot stick. This principle ignites our divine flame transmutation known as molten gold alchemy, providing the emotional power to ease tension, bring comfort, eliminate feelings of inferiority and anger while supporting the manifestation of pure potential unhindered. We stand at the edge of a precipice where all our material and spiritual standards are being tested, reconsidered, and applied. We are being forged in the flame of truth, strength through adversity. The strongest steel is forged by the hottest fires. It is pounded and struck repeatedly. The fire gives it power and flexibility. What is the gold standard we are setting for ourselves now? 
Where do we place our faith, our inherent capacity for an all-abundant life? As we spiral back into the inner sanctum of Venus, Vega, Alpha, Lyran, Sirius triple stargate patterning, and the mechanisms of the 678 dimensional pattern sequencing. We are able to hold more light, geometric fractality, and the embodiment of sacred source codes. In this way, a divine reordering naturally occurs. Barbara Hand Clough explains these dimensional attributes and functions as such. The sixth dimension consists of morphic fields, sacred geometry, Sirius. It is the realm of geometric forms and patterns. Patterns and geometric forms allow light and sound to manifest into concrete physical matter. Indeed, the pattern of our soul is alive in the sixth dimension. By keeping a healthy relationship with the sixth dimension, we can remain united to our source and the intentions we came into this physical life with from the outer dimensions. Returning to patterns of origin is an important practice. It is worthwhile examining any artificial imprinting that we may have adopted that is not our true pattern. Examining beliefs is not enough. Cultural conditioning and life experience can interfere with our patterns of origin. Repatterning is the work of the sixth dimension. Trees hold this naturally and can help us return to our source pattern. Being aligned and connected to the true organic world tree keeps us oriented, balanced, and grounded to true source rather than the artificial ones we may have been patterned to align with. The seventh dimension is the galactic informational highways of light through the Andromeda galaxy. This is a realm of vibrational resonance. The light from the eighth dimension becomes sound in the seventh dimension. Sound from the seventh creates form in the sixth dimension. The frequencies of light and sound create all that is known to us as reality. Silence is full of sound. Language is related to this dimension. What we speak creates form to sound. Hearing and knowing are two different things. Do we speak what we know? Tell the truth. The frequency vibrating through your body at any given moment is your truth. The eighth dimension cosmic order, Orion. This is the light and knowing of the cosmos, the crystal clear intellect. Here is the place of diamond clarity where there is no dualistic shadow. In this dimension we can interact with the one or whatever you perceive the divine to be. In the eighth dimension we can also have access to an understanding of the vastness of all time. All time is held here in the interfacing light patterns of all that is. Herein are the councils of great beings. Despite the emphasis on wartime history being propagated as the focus, Orion's Belt sits in the null zone gateway of our galaxy, wherein duality reality and polarity pole cannot hold charge. The triquatra gateway patterning was not severed, but safeguarded at a minimum aperture flow due to the Lyran wars that were first fought over the cradle of Lyra, which held the avatar matrix, imbibing the service to others. Law of one principle pitted against our great central sun god consciousness by the false light tyrannical king anti-life mindset. The current gateway access is re-establishing the precepts of the Lyran-Lemurian alliance through the risen law of one. There was a great explosion that created a rip in our connection to our eternal nature and universal body. We are here on earth to heal the wounds within the cosmic psyche regarding the story of the rip in time. This healing is of the split of the two suns which through our ability to hold greater solar and stellar impulses is remembering the great solar body which is our ability to heart infuse our higher mental faculty which that of divine mind and the sacred heart. 
to the degree we integrate the golden plasma in our blood, the stars in our bones, and the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, circulating throughout and around the central nervous system, which as a metaquantum capacitor acts as the control panel to every operation of function in the super biocomputer, correcting and upgrading communion currents from our soul and spirit, the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, in a microsense bathes, nourishes, and protects the brain and spinal cord, invigorated through the breath of life that is given from the ignition point of the inner spirit. In a macro sense, the CNS is the perfection of our planetary architecture grid lines and planetary logos. Decree, I, state your name, Hold my heart space in a state of pure empathy and compassionate action. I command, not demand, that any and all ideologies of invasion, perpetration, harmful artificial technologies are expelled from my fields and bodies now. Any and all false hybridization, enslavement, bioelectromagnetic field manipulation, and artificial neural networks are cleared and integrated through divine mind. All frequency fences, artificial technology, alien machinery, siphoning, redirecting forces, and energetic reversal currents are expelled and repelled by the divine radiance force frequency of the spiritual geometry bodies and their causal pathways of organic ascension. Through the power, love, and wisdom invested in me, I now state, I am eternally light. I am life eternal. So be it. It is so. Many can now attest that the degree that we are receiving and integrating the tremendous influxing of stellar and solar is in fact direct response to our own solar synthesis within. We only get what we are ready for. No more, no less. But wait, there's more. Bees first came to earth via Venus. This juncture, too, heralds in the opening of the true Queen Bee Alliance access gate of the true Divine Feminine. Venus via Vega is reconfiguring through Tefnut, a.k.a. this Phoenix, sitting on high in pride of place on her throne on the Giza Plateau, is relinquishing faux authority over the reconfiguration of the gates. Much golden liquid light is pouring in through the fields and forms of our beloved Earth Star and us. The 6D morphic field Geometria Sagrata, configuration governed by the Syrians, is heralding in the Galactica gateway change over phase of pure organic golden galactic consciousness. The tears of Ra are considered liquid gold, manifesting as bees as they touch the moistened earth. Tefnut is the Neter, representing the element of moisture. She is the conductor of the inaugural entry portal of this triquatra. Honey is the new currency of Alchemical infusion, alchemical. Our beloved Venus is the golden rose, imbibing our higher self qualities of hope, faith, joy, love, friendship, loyalty, and eternality. Sound your soul signature in the key of your golden Christic heart and the melody of your liquid light ambrosia, soul. Breathe in the light of the sun, the golden liquid plasmic light of Christic source. Drink in the perfection of this pure rosa di oro. Golden rose geometry in our molten gold alchemy. As we anchor and alchemize all for all. Golden gateways within gateways are we. Expanding and spiraling throughout eternity. Lion's gate blessing all. Ra'el ine Raelin. There's a sacred energy guiding you. That's why lately you've been distancing yourself from who and what no longer serves you. Instead, you've now begun attracting and manifesting who and what does serve you, elevate you, nourish and inspire you to vibrate higher daily. Namaste. 
From divine sistar of the light Shekinah rose, blue ray transmission, new earth shift symptoms, ultra sensitive empath, big frequency shift influx of light. So much is going on on the planet on so many different levels and realms, including the collective consciousness, Mother Earth, Gaia, and your own inner world. As a result, we wish to remind you of the necessity of remaining focused on what is yours, what is not, and who you are. What are your gifts, service, blessings, and mission? That you did choose to be here right now on Earth to make a difference with your frequency and consciousness. Recognizing that this is how you serve and what is right for you will help you return to your center, your gifts, and your service, as this is crucial. As a sensitive empath, starseed, lightworker, angelic, or blu-ray, you can feel, intuitively perceive, and intuitively sense what is occurring in others, the world, and the collective consciousness. This is how the frequency balance is maintained and how we progress in the ascension, with you being the divine frequency. By receiving the incoming upgrades, influxes of light, and attunements of heaven, releasing the pains of the past, and healing our wounded nature, allowing the heart of the Christ consciousness. And at times you are called upon to be grid workers to transform the energies, Pray for the world, pray for others, shine your radiance, the light, as some of you are light radiators, and hold the frequency. Your center is the love that created you, which is real, true, and always prevails. A frequency shift has just occurred, and some of you are experiencing ultra-sensitivity, access to the higher realms of light, and the presence of angels. The awakening and remembrance of your dormant divine abilities, as well as a new sense of self and clarity. Know that when a big frequency shift happens, there can be a reverberation or backlash in people, relationships, and on the planet. And as you may be experiencing, a higher light and heart expansion. Others in the world may feel threatened, and it may increase their efforts to try to conceal, attack, and thwart the light and ascension process. More frequency shifts will be coming this month and this year. Tune into when this happens as your luminous vibration of light increases, and where you can feel super empathically sensitivity, then see what happens and arises in the world if there is a counter-event or scenario to the light and or fear-based event or circumstance that is created. As the influxes of light emerge, they have the potential to reawaken old wounds to come to the surface for transformation, release, and healing. The more intense the fear-based event or situation, many times, the higher the frequency of light that just came onto the planet. Ascension symptoms and latest frequency shift, period of shifting in and out of time and time-space, and working with time in a new way, needing peace and quiet to feel and integrate, feeling hungrier, needing more water, changing what you eat, resting and needing sleep, increased synchronicity, seeing the number sequences and angel numbers, the ultra-sensitives may be feeling waves of energy and light going through them, feeling the body vibrating and almost shaking with the energies. A shift in relationships and connections will be renewed and upgraded, or they will no longer be compatible. A vibrational match and will end. Connecting with new guides, angels, and nature, remembering and awakening who you are as a being from the angelic, light, and galactic realms, your origins, and your creation. 4444333 from shekinahrose.com From Divine Sistar of the Light, Sophie Bashford Lionsgate Portal 2023, Message 2 There's something very specific to those souls who have a sacred contract to serve the Divine Mother or are a part of returning the Divine Feminine back to the Earth as part of their life missions. 
People who arrive in this lifetime with a contract to awaken to their own deep bond with the goddess often feel a sense of urgency or pressure about fulfilling their sacred agreements. Their soul holds secret instructions about how to deliver their gifts, knowledge, and light to the world. Much of their own personal healing and soul growth will be interwoven with what they're here to give to others and the planet. A common feeling and fear within the divine feminine healers and those who identify with the terms such as light worker, star seed, healer, energy worker, mystic, angel, guide, and so forth is that they're somehow not going to complete their divine missions. Divine feminine healers can feel that they must get it right in this lifetime and not disappoint, let down or abandon those that they have a contract to serve. Every divine feminine healer's path to awakening and remembering their inner gifts is different, but these souls will often feel extremely sensitive about their life purpose and find it almost impossible not to compare their own achievements or progress with others. In some ways, their divine contracts are urgent, because our Mother Earth has been calling for these souls to bring their deep magic and healing power back, and there is no time to lose. Also, many divine feminine healers with an ancient contract to serve the Goddess in myriad forms are capable of achieving very high standards and creating excellence with their service work. But this can be internalized by these very giving, very sensitive empaths as too much pressure put upon themselves. They're also highly critical of themselves and how well they think they're doing. The perfectionist or high achiever are traits that are often seen as negative or something to be healed from. And yet, it's important to frame these qualities with a unique angle when it comes to the divine feminine healer. It is time to reframe our beliefs and our perceptions. Because they are responding to something deep within their ancient souls, an agreement made many, many moons ago with multiple goddesses, gods, guides, angels, elementals, and star beings. An agreement and set of instructions that were always destined to unfold perfectly in a unique time and space sequence. Yes, opening to these divine contracts and living them was never going to be easy. Delivering the contracts is a lifelong process, and the journey is more important than the destination. The sacred contracts of the divine feminine healer, or whosoever she, he, they identify themselves, are steeped in significance. They simply have to be activated, rediscovered, offered up, given to the earth. And the divine feminine healers who put so much pressure upon themselves to undertake this work are actually the only ones who can deliver these energies. If you resonate with these words, then you must know this today. You're opening to your sacred feminine contracts perfectly. You are delivering these contracts perfectly. It's safe to take a break. It's okay to not know exactly how it's going to work out. You're capable of carrying out your divine assignments. You're highly qualified and experienced as a divine feminine healer. Even if you need to reawaken and develop your gifts in this lifetime, you're not running out of time. You can do this, and everything that's put in front of you, even if it's challenging, daunting, or scary, you will rise and expand beyond your wildest imagination. You're so much better than you think you are at what you do. Your contracts aren't going to disappear, and all the opportunities you need are waiting for you, are right here, right now. Make sure your eyes are open. You may have to work hard to fulfill your destiny as a divine feminine healer, but you don't have to be a workaholic. You are allowed to have a personal life, and indeed, this is something that is going to be more of a priority for you in the coming years. You can relax. Your soul knows what it's doing. You are part of a great, great, and very old mystery. You can't miss out on your purpose. You cannot miss out on the experiences you signed up for with the goddess. 
It's not possible to disappoint or fail her. You're not running out of time, and the experiences and relationships and successes that are meant for you will not pass you by. In truth, they are so much better than you're currently imagining for yourself. You're right where you're supposed to be. From SophieBashford.com